three Excel questions that came up in a job interview. Let's see how can we solve each one of these different questions. And something that I already can say is we need to have here a variety of knowledge in Excel because in the first question, for example, we're going to need to know how to make a chart in Excel. And then the second question is concerning formulas and functions. The third one, we're going to need to do something a little bit different, a pivot table. So we're going to see how can we solve each one of these questions. And I really hope this video can help you out if you're going to make a Excel uh, job interview and over there you have an Excel test, okay? Let's start here with the first question where you're going to need to make an Excel chart. Let's see what, what the question is asking us to do. From the data set above, make a column chart to analyze the total sold per product. Highlight the largest value with green and the smallest one with head. Okay. So here we have a column chart, as we can see, and through this chart right here, we need to highlight the largest value with a greenish color and the smallest one with this headish one, headish color. If I take a look here in the data set, I'm going to need to use the first column where I have the product and also the last column where I have the total sold. But the problem here is how can I select the first column and the third one? Because I have here in the middle, in between these two, a column quantity in stock that I am not going to use in this chart. So how can I skip this column? Something that I can do here, and of course, there's a lot of different ways to create a chart in Excel. I'm going to show you here a way that I always like to, to do. That is, I'm going to select the first column, simple as that, and then I'm going to press and hold the control key, control key, and then I'm going to select here the last column. Because that way, as you guys just saw, I can select any different range in Excel. I can select the first one, press and hold the control key, and then select the second one. Now I can go to insert tab and select the chart that I need to use here. Can I select a pie chart? Of course not, because the question is talking about a column chart. So this is the chart that I need to use here, column. Okay, the chart is already on the screen. Maybe I can click here in the corner, click hold and drag up to move the chart a little bit and also increase the size of the chart click and hold this little circle that we have in the edges, in the corners of the chart. Okay, so maybe the first part of the first question is done, it's complete, because we can see the chart is already here on the screen, and maybe you can tell me, uh, I don't know how to, I know how to make a chart in Excel, but I don't know how to highlight the columns, but here is something important that I need to tell you. Even though you don't know how to complete 100% of the question, do what you know how to do, okay? If you just know how to make a chart in Excel without highlight a specific column, do it, okay? It's better to do something than don't. Let's move on and complete the another part of the question that is to highlight the largest value and highlight the smallest one. The largest value that I can see here, I have a, a lot of different categories. Item A, item B, item C, item D, and so on, so on. Through the height, the size of the column, I can see that the item B is the largest value, is the, the biggest one. And the way I need to highlight this column with a greenish color, with a green color. And if you just put your mouse, your cursor over the column, you're going to have this little tag where we can see the category, item B, and also the value, okay? That represents this specific column where your mouse is over and over. Okay, let me double click here in this specific column. Want you to make sure I can select uh, the column and open this right panel. But something that you can see is all the columns are selected. But I don't want you to select all the columns, just a specific one. So we're going to click again in the item B column, like this. Okay. Now only the item B column is selected. I can go now to fill line, fill, and I can go straight to color, click here and select a green one. You can choose the green that you like the most. You don't need to use a specific type of green because the question here doesn't didn't specify what type of green you need to use. Okay, so I'm gonna need just a standard. I'm gonna use here just a standard green. Let me bring the, the screen a little bit to the right like this, and then I'm gonna choose here the smallest one. Okay, and I'm gonna highlight with a headish color like this. Yeah, we're done. I can close now this right panel. And the first question is 100% done. This is how we make this first question correctly. Now we can move on to the second question where we have something a little bit different. That is, we need to use here some formulas and functions to solve this question. Use the data set below to solve the questions. 
use functions or formulas to solve the problems in the corresponding yellow cells. Okay, so just underneath here the header, the title, we have the data set with a couple of different informations, such as the date, order ID, total sold, and also the region name. The first question that we need to, to read here and also to complete is return the total sold. Okay, maybe it can sound a simple question or a simple task to complete, and uh, indeed it is. So, what is the total sold? How can I know that? If I have a column with the total sold for each one of the individual individuals orders that I have, if I add up all the values that I have here in the total column, I can have the total sold. And to do it, there's a couple of different ways. And the title here asking me to use a function or formulas. A formula could be equal sign, and then I can select the first cell, add to. I'm gonna use this add to is the plus sign, okay? Add to the second cell here, add to the third one, add to the fourth one, and so on. But as you guys can see, it's gonna take me a long time to complete this, this task. Can I do that way? Yes, for sure. It's correct? Yes, that is. So, uh, but there's maybe a faster and smarter way to do it. Equals sign some function. I'm gonna double click here, I want you to select. Now I can add up all the values that I have here with the sum function, it's much easier to do. I can just select everything, and that's it. Enter, okay, here we got the correct result. Return the total sold. Okay, the total sold is $37,815. Now the second question is, return the total for the order ID below. So we have here this order ID, 425-730. Uh, Let's see what is this order right here, okay? 425-730. The total sold is 4,108. Can I just type in manually the number right here and then press enter and that's it? No, because the header here is asking me to use a function or a formula, not to just type in manually the number itself, the correct result. So what is the formula or function that can bring it back as result? Something that I'm looking for. I'm gonna give you here a hint looking for lookup function i can use maybe the, there's a lot of different lookup functions eight lookup x lookup v lookup also index match function but in this situation i'm going to use the equal sign v lookup function because there is a lookup function that can help us with this situation let me double click here in this function one two it's very simple to fill all the arguments that we have here the first one is the lookup what is the thing that I want to look for? The order ID, so this cell right here, comma. And what is the table array that I'm gonna use to look up for this value, for this thing that I want to look up? The table array is this one right here, but we need to be mindful here because I need to start and select as the first column, the column where I have the order ID, because the order ID is the thing that I'm looking for. So I can't start with the date. I need to start with the order ID column, like this. And one more thing. I want to bring it back as result, the total column. Okay, all right? And because of that, I need to select either the order ID and the total column. I want to look up in the order ID and I want to bring it back as result, the corresponding value in the total column. So this is why I just select this, the both columns. Now, comma, column index number. What is the color, the column that I want to bring it back as result? The column that I want to bring it back as result is the column number two. Uh, I didn't get what it say. So take a look here. The range that I select is this range right here. The first column is the column number one. It's the first one. And the second column is the column number two, the second one. So if we want to bring it back as result, the total sold, the total sold is in the second column. So this is why I need to type it in here, the number two, because I want to bring it back the second column. And then comma, what is the range lookup? I want to use an exact match, or I want to bring it back exactly the result that I want to, that I'm looking for. So I need to select here, false, exact match. I want you to select, close parentheses, enter, and that's it. The total sold for this specific order is $4,000. And if you take a look here to check if it's correct, yes, it's correct. Now the third question, the third part of the second question is, return the average sold. As we did before, return the total sold, we use here the sum function. There is a function that is similar to the sum 
in uh, in the arguments. Let's say the way in the arguments is turn standpoint. That is the equals sign average function. I can double click here one two, and with the average function I can make the average of any numbers that I selected in the range. So I want to make the the average with all the numbers that I have here in the total column like this. So I just need to select everything that makes up the total column and then enter and that's it. And we can see the difference between the total sold and the average. Even though I have uh, maybe a couple of orders with $7,000 sold, $8,000 and so on, we also have some orders with uh, small, small values such as $2,000, $1.5 and so on and so on. But anyway, the average is the is when you add up all the values and then divide by the quantity of the values and then you're gonna have the average that is five thousand two hundred seventy three dollars okay the second question is done it's completed so by now we already did it here a chart a couple of different functions and now we need to move on to the last and final question that is the question number three where we're gonna need to make here a pivot table to help us to analyze the data set that we have. Use the data set below to create a pivot table and analyze the total sold per region. And here we have an example on how can we do it or the final result. The total sold per region. And what is a pivot table? So a pivot table is a tool in Excel that can help us to slice and dice the data set. Okay, in other words, it's a tool that can help us to summarize the data that you have. So let's say here, indeed, we have a large data set with a lot of different rows. Let's say, in taking this example as reference, total sold per region. If I ask you, what is the total sold? Okay, it's easy to do this task. I just need to add up all the values that make up the total column. And then in the, if I ask you this question, what is the total sold for the region south? Or what is the total sold for the region northeast, for example. Now these questions start to be a little bit more complex to complete and to answer. That way the pivot table can help us to summarize, to analyze the, the large data set that we have. To create a pivot table here in Excel, we just need to click in anywhere in any cell within the data set and then I can go to insert tab and select right here, pivot table. Click here. I'm gonna have this new window that's gonna pop up for me. I can choose this option right here, existing worksheet, because I'm gonna just input the pivot table just to the right of the data set that I have here. So existing worksheet, I can click here in this upper arrow and select this cell to the right, down arrow and then okay. Here we got the area of our pivot table. And as you guys can see, this area right here is the pivot table itself. Here to the right, we have the pivot table fields, or basically each one of the options or the columns that we had in the data set. Down below right here, we have the, the areas itself. So we can use filters, columns, rows, or values for different options. So let's say in each one of the rows, such as the example, I want you to see a different region, Midwest, North, Northeast, South, Southeast. How can I do it? I can take the region okay so click hold and drag the region and drop right here in the rows field just drop right here now we can visualize what's happened through the pivot table right here each one of the rows now are a different region midwest north northeast south southeast okay that way we already complete half of the question another half that we need to complete here is to see the total sold per region so what is the option that I need to use right here? The total, right? I need to take the total, click, hold, and drag, and just drop over here the values. Okay, now we can close this panel, and we're done. This is the total sold per region. And also here we have the grand total, or the sum of all the values that we have in each one of the regions. Something that we can do here to make our pivot table a little bit more complete, let's say that way, is instead of using just the values itself, the number is to format these numbers into currency. If we, we, we are talking about dollars, maybe we can put the dollar signs, okay? So let me select here everything, all the numbers itself, and then home tab, I can go here to the dollar sign. I can click here, and yeah, that's it. 
we done. So the third question is done and we can see that the result that we have here that we got in the pivot table is exactly the same that is the, the result in the example. So it's perfect cor correct. Question three is done, the second one and the first one is also done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we solve these three different questions that came up in the job interview. And if you have any question or any suggestion, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow. As ever, there has a new video. I see you there.